and show you a little bit of problem solving that I'm doing as I'm going together with the brake system. So I'm going to switch the camera around here and uh, tell you a little bit about a problem that I had. Well, I'll just start telling you right now. So I'm putting new calipers on the front brake, the front disc brakes, and some new uh, uh, wheel cylinders on the rear drums. So back here on the back, I haven't got to them yet, but we're getting ready to move there next. But, and actually, it's a fun story here, so... I, uh, doing my looking around, trying to keep this low buck, I decided to get two wheel cylinders from uh, Rock Auto online because they had what I wanted and it was inexpensive. And uh, this is kind of just a kudos to them and, uh, and uh, something that tells me that they're, you know, they're a good legit business and we can support them and feel comfortable about it. So they sent me the two wheel cylinders, came in a timely manner, price was right. Uh, only problem is one, uh, so I, they're two different ones, one for each side, and they're just different in the way that they're drilled. But uh, I got them here, and somebody had switched one in a box, and so I ended up with two of them for the driver's side, and, uh, you know, one was boxed wrong. So I oh, shoot, well, here goes a fiasco trying to, you know, get that returned online. But uh, right on the invoice that the shipping invoice that came with them was uh, uh, said, if you got a problem, go to this part of the website and let us know. And I did, and lo and behold, that problem got solved. I mean, it was just, I, this, I had to identify which part it was that was bad, answer about five or six questions, and they said, okay, your refund's on the way. Don't worry about sending the part back unless we tell you to later on. And... Uh, I'm like, that was so refreshing compared to an experience that I had a while back where somebody was wanting me to send the part back to China where it came from. It was going to cost more to ship it than the part was worth. And so my kudos that go out to Rock Auto, um, unfortunately they didn't actually have the part that I needed and so I ended up running down to um, AutoZone and lo and behold they had it down there. But anyway, so that problem got resolved, and then as I started putting these calipers on, I got the driver's side done, and got around here to the passenger side, working on it, and I'll flip the camera around here and show you what I found. Right here, we're working on the thing, and uh, I found this a while back, but there's a bolt that goes right here, a retaining bolt, looks like this. And it goes in there to, this is a thing that slides in under the caliper with a little spring that also goes on. And that bolt goes in there to hold that from sliding back and forth once it's in place. And uh, these are some old spindles that I got probably from a wrecking yard. And that bolt has been broken off. And uh, so I'm like, okay, well... I hate doing that kind of stuff, but I'll drill it out and, um, you know, re-thread it, and it should be okay. So I got in there yesterday and started trying to drill that out, and come to find out that bolt is some kind of hardened steel, and I couldn't drill it. I ruined three or four drill bits trying to get a hole drilled through there. <clears throat> and I'm like, doggone it, what am I going to do? So I did what I found as a pretty good thing to do a lot of times you run into stuff like this you just can't figure out I just put my tools down <clears throat> excuse me and went in the house and did my some stuff for the evening just let my brain go away from the problem and slept on it and I woke up this morning I'm like ah I know what the answer is that's easy because I know these spindles can be drilled and tapped real easy because on the other side I drilled a couple of holes into a section back in here to hold a steering arm when I was first building the steering system. And so it, it's just forged steel, so it should, it's not hard to drill and tap it, I don't think. So here's the solution that my brain came up with all of a sudden. They said, hey, you got this piece that's designed to work on both sides. On the other side, it's totally reversed from this, and the bolt goes here. And uh, I realized, oh, well, why not come over here and drill and tap a hole 
because all it's got to do is hold this bar from moving sideways once it's in place. And I don't even understand why they used a hardened bolt because it uh, there's no pressure on the thing. So I'm just going to come in here and drill and tap myself a hole here, um, which will allow me to use that, and then I don't have to go get another spindle and go through all that hassle. And I am looking here, and I'm going to have a clearance problem uh, once I put that in. In fact, actually, that will probably sit right there. But it's still closer than it needs to be, so I'm going to take this bolt and cut the unthreaded portion of the tip off of it and that should give me the clearance I need, hold the thing in place and completely solve that problem. So that's gonna that's where I'm gonna go this morning and I will show you as I start getting through here. I'm pretty sure like I said, I'm quite sure that I can drill and tap this. If I can't that's gonna be a real surprise. So I will start in that process and show you what it looks like when I get to that point. There we go. Problem solved. Got that hole drilled and it, uh, yeah, it's a little close to the edge there, but it's still got plenty of meat to hold it in and it's going to work out just fine. And I'm looking down in there. Let me stabilize the camera here. The clearance between the end of that bolt and the rotor is sufficient now. There's no way that's going to hit anything, so I'm not even going to have to cut the end off of that. Um, so I think we're all set, ready to go back together. This bolt just, uh, the shoulder of it down there snugs up against the metal there and seats, and then that allows that thing just to not slide out once you got it in place and that's all that matters with it so problem solved that's what happens if you give your brain a little time to sit and work on things um, it'll usually come up with an answer for you so there we go we'll move on I'll uh, get the caliper on here and show you what that looks like and uh, also we've taken both of these uh, discs off and uh, Regrease the wheel bearings, so we're all good to go there. We've got, uh, you know, got them where they're spinning good. They were before, but we just got fresh grease in them. Anyway, what I love about this caliper kit is it comes with an entire new set of hardware, which is something that's a big bonus here for me. Um, there's also this spring clip that goes in there sits on there like that so we have a new one of those and it also comes with a new uh, the line bolt it's got the holes in it and the two new copper washers which that's a big deal uh, I've, I had the old ones and I clean them up but my copper washers I kind of had scrounged up some from my parts bin and made it work but I got two brand new ones for each side now so that's gonna make this a whole nice new setup I got these from O'Reilly they are there's the brand on them they're Duralast no not O'Reilly got these from AutoZone they're Duralast brand and look, check these things out I was expecting just a chunk of cast iron I was gonna paint them but they come painted they've got some kind of gray paint on them so um, that will make them last longer and look halfway decent in the process. So I'm going to put them on here and uh, that will finish up my front brake rebuild. I've also got a brand new master cylinder on this thing. So between the master cylinder, two new front calipers and two rear wheel cylinders will be in great shape. Um, the, uh, the rotors and the you know, when I picked up this whole assembly from the wrecking yard, it had a set of brand new brake pads on it. I, I haven't looked at the back. I'm hoping I got some good uh, brake shoes back there, but we'll just have to see when we get to that point. I haven't actually had those drums off yet. So we'll get these, this caliper on, show you what that looks like, and then uh, move on to putting those uh, brake uh, wheel cylinders on the back and and we'll bleed the system and I should have a car that stops. <laughs>
And just like that, ta-da, there we go. I have a new brake caliper on there. Uh, yeah, these things are going to look pretty nice, but, you know, on a rat rod, I'm, I don't really care too much about looks, although I do like to have a few detail things that do look nice on it. So anyway, they're going to work good. One of the things I like to do, especially on these uh, Ford calipers, the way that they build them and the system operates, they have these two surfaces here that have to slide against each other so that caliper moves back and forth as it clamps and also as it wears. It can move around. One of the biggest problems that we get with these Fords, and there are similar problems on other disc brake systems, They're, the caliper is always sliding on something. And uh, if, if you take these surfaces, and I wire brush this really good, um, before I put these together and then I put a very light coat of grease on both sides of this both on the caliper and on the, the spindle as I slid it in there <coughs> and uh, you want to keep it light because remember the grease and brakes don't mix well you don't want uh, any grease getting over here on the surface of your disc or on the uh, pad itself <coughs> because that will give you problems with your stopping power but anyway um, by getting those greased at least in the beginning it's going to allow that to move and hopefully it won't rust up over time um, in, originally these things I mean your spindle comes unpainted from the factory uh, normally the calipers were unpainted from the factory and so it just led to immediate rust problems especially you know, in, your pla in a place that's got a lot of rain or in the wintertime, uh, you get snow and salt and stuff. You, these things rust up, and what happens then is the caliper can't move, and it still clamps, but it usually only clamps the shoe that is uh, closest to the piston. And it, 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 that side can move. The other side ends up not moving, and so you get one uh, pad that's worn real bad, and the other pad doesn't wear hardly at all. And it screws up your rotor and everything else. So, anyway, that's uh, just a little tidbit there. You, you do want uh, a little bit of lubrication in there so that it will keep moving and hopefully not get rusty. So, just an FYI, it'll help your brake system work better. So, that's got the front calipers uh, put together. Now, we'll move on to the drums on the back and try to get them put together and make everything work. Aha! Here's another one of those things you gotta watch out for. So, I was putting my wheel on, got ready to cinch it down, and I've got no movement in it! Ah! What's going on here? And obviously it has to be something I just did, so I come around here, and lo and behold, looky here, there's my new bolt, and what's happening to it is it's sticking out too far and hitting against the rim. Sorry, probably really bad lighting in there. Let me turn the light on here. Did that work? There we go. Alright, so see we're hitting the rim right there. And uh, it's probably not by much, but uh, I'm going to pull that wheel back off and then I think what I'm going to do is countersink this just a little bit and then if I have to I'll grind that head off and uh, that'll give me the clearance that I need to lift that wheel spin. So we'll go back and solve that problem and we'll be back. So here's the new and improved version. So I countersunk the whole little bit so that we pulled it down tighter against here. It's still not tight. Um, but that's going to move it in just a sixteenth of an inch or so, and then we cut the head off. And so now we're much thinner, and we'll put it back together and see if we got her fixed or if we've actually outsmarted ourselves here. So I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, I think we solved our problem here. So get down there, and you can see. Now we've got clearance between the rim and that bolt. And uh, 
don't worry, the rubbing sound that it's making is the rusty uh, part of the dit, the rotor, and uh, that will wear off as soon as we do a few stops with it. So, anyway, got our problem solved there. Now we'll move on to the back and get our back brakes done. All right, launching into the back brakes here. Um, got the drum off after having to compress the brakes a little bit by moving the adjuster down here on the bottom from the backing plate was able to pull the drum off and my brake shoes are shot so I went out and bought me a second set or not a second set a replacement set and got three auto parts stores in the little town I live in and online it showed that only one of them had uh, the right brake shoes and I went to one of the others because it was closer and thought well, I'll just check and see because sometimes they have parts they don't show online and lo and behold they had them same price as the other store but not only that as I was checking out he says well do you want a can of free brake cleaner or free uh, brake fluid <laughs> so I already just got some brake fluid so I said well I'll take the brake cleaner so I got a five or six dollar can of brake fluid or brake cleaner for the same price or as part of the price of my brake shoes at the store that wasn't supposed to have them so Fun story, those kind of things have happened all over on this truck. It's been a blast, so I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, I'm going to pull this apart. Anytime you're doing brake drum or drum brakes, it's a really good idea to take pictures of things it, since we've got the technology with our cameras today. So I took a picture of this area and one of the adjuster area down here just for reference so that I can... Uh, not have to worry about I want to put them back together and getting all the pieces in the right order and uh, used to be that I would only take one side apart at a time so that I could reference the other side um, and that's still a good idea but this with these cameras on our phones it just allows us the option to go in there and uh, make sure that we've got pictures of everything even while I'm videoing this this will give me a a reference to uh, refer to as I'm doing because these things are a jigsaw puzzle and some of them can get really complicated I think this is going to be pretty straightforward but anyway that's always a couple little tips that will help you out there so I'm going to tear this apart clean all those parts and pieces back up and put her back together looks like my brake drums in good shape right there I don't have any uh, uh, big scars or anything on it, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but we'll get her put back together and I'll show you what it looks like with new parts or clean parts on it. Well, just for kicks and giggles, here's the whole thing all torn apart. And you can see what a cruddy, grody mess that thing was. And here's all our parts and pieces that are mostly dirty, somewhat rusty. So I'm going to wire wheel everything before I put it back together and uh, put it in there with our new wheel cylinder and new brake shoes and we should be in good shape so a lot of people think they have to buy a hardware kit every time they change their brakes and that's not true mostly a hardware kit is just nice shiny new stuff and all of this stuff as long as it's in good shape and hasn't worn uh, because something happened is perfectly functional just the way it is and normally on a normal brake job I don't uh, you know clean it and paint it but you know this is a little bit different situation I've got time so I'm gonna do it and clean all these pieces up paint them and then they will be ready to go back together and we'll have some nice functional rear brakes to go with our front brakes there we go we're back now I got everything cleaned up and new parts laid out there so yeah, I just painted everything silver because it dries fast and didn't have to worry about it. So there's all my parts. I haven't assembled any of it yet. I'll start putting that back together. Uh, sprayed some copper color on my brake drum. Not that it matters, but that's just one of the little decorative things I'm going to do to it. Uh, took a wire brush and brushed all that stuff off. The cool thing was everything that was in here was brake dust. 
So that tells me that my axle seal down there has not been leaking, which is a real positive thing. So I'm not going to have to worry about that. Um, one of the things that I like to do here um, is put a little grease on the areas that are going to rub on each other. And so you have these flat pads that are uh, built into the backing plate on these things. There's usually three of them per shoe, so there's three more over here on this other side. So I usually like to clean those up and smear a little bit of grease on there. Again, you don't want much because that's actually going to rub right directly next to the friction material on the shoe. So you don't want enough that it can get on the shoe and contaminate it or you're going to lose a little bit of braking ability there. Another place would be right here because things pivot there. This is not such a big deal, but it wouldn't hurt to have a little grease there. And when I put these adjusters back together, I usually put a little grease on the threads. Um, just to keep them from seizing up. I've found one or two that were seized up over my life. Most of them aren't, but it's a good idea to do that. You do have a pivot point here, but it, it is in a big hole and it really doesn't ever get to where it won't pivot, but it wouldn't hurt to put a tiny bit on that. I'm looking at everything else here. I think it'll be just fine. don't really need to have it. So. Those are a couple of tips as you go back together. Oh yeah, I was going to tell you, um, if you're working on brum, drum brakes and you're going to do it more than one time, go get yourself one of these tools. They are indispensable for taking the springs off of these things. And you can do it with some other tools, but you're likely to hurt yourself and it'll be really difficult. But one of these things makes it a cakewalk to put them on and off. So just a little suggestion there. Um, also, it helps. You can do the adjusters with a flat screwdriver from the back, but it helps because the angles are never good. There's always stuff in the way to get one of these brake adjuster tools, too. So, just a couple little tips for you there. Anyway, now we'll move on to reassembling things, and we'll be back to show you the finished product there. So, there she is, all back together with all the freshly painted parts all cleaned up and lubricated properly and ready to put the drum back on so yeah so what I usually do on these is I have the adjuster adjusted all the way in this way together so that the brakes are as small as they can be and then we'll put the drum back on and then adjust that adjuster from the outside until it gets to where the brakes are just ready to drag and then we'll leave it there and let the self-adjusting features do their part as we drive the thing so that should work out good I'm ready to put the drum back on okay she's all together now we're on to the other side there's my copper detailing showing through the wheel here a lot of people don't, maybe not even like these old wheels like this, but I ended up with a set of them that I got on an old truck, and these are something that when I was in high school were one of the up-and-coming Hot Wheels, and I've always liked them. So I think they'll be really cool on this. I'm not sure if I've got the other pair for the front, but I'm not sure if they're going to fit the tires that I've got. But uh, it be kind of fun to get the whole set put on here and functional, but... We'll see. I don't know how that'll work out. We're going to get the tire problem solved here at another juncture. But anyway, it's come along great. I'm not going to go into any detail on the video of the other side, but because uh, it's just a duplicate of this. But we'll come back and show you, I don't know, show you the master cylinder and some things like that. And we'll get her bled, and this thing will actually stop for the first time in its new life. All right, boys and girls, the Crazy Dad Rat Rod has brakes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good feeling. Um, so, here's the master cylinder. Actually, put that on a couple years ago. I just bought a rebuilt one uh, when I was actually building it because I didn't have an old one to mock up in its place. So that's been sitting there. So we filled it up, had my wife come out here to help me bleed the brakes, and we only had 
One minor mishap, had a loose fitting right here, so we were leaking for a little bit, but got that taken care of. Um, got everything all hooked up with those new rotors on it and all bled out up front. Over there, can't see the back, but we got that uh, all done. And uh, this is the exciting part. So I can get in the thing now. Lights on. Yeah. There we go. I have a brake pedal. All right. So we might have to do a little more bleeding, but uh, it'll stop it. And a lot of times if you do that and let things sit for a while, it lets the air kind of get accumulated in the system to one spot so that it's easier to actually get it out when you go to bleed it again. Anyway, it's working. That is a massive step forward. We can go check that off of the punch list here. See what we got. Yeah, where is it? There we go. Brakes. Get that done right there. So that one will wait, but I got engine prep thing. So really, that's it. Got three engine prep things. And uh, that's really going to be it. So that's where we go next. Guys, on the Crazy Dad Rat Rod, it's time to do a will it start video on a 20 year old brand new engine. <laughs> yeah, the engine's completely rebuilt, been sitting on the engine stand for that long until I stuck it into here and it's just been sitting in here. So we're going to show you how to get a new en an engine started that's been sitting for a while but basically is a new engine. And we'll just show you a couple things you need to be aware of and we'll walk through that process and that will be where we'll go on the next episode of the Crazy Dad Rat Rod. So welcome, glad everybody's enjoying these. Uh, it's fun to watch how many people are actually watching them. I appreciate the thumbs up that we get and the questions are always fun in the comment section. So if you're liking it, please like, hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more as we bring this one along and get it back on the road. And that's gonna be the next episode pretty close. You know what? Yeah, by the end of that next episode, we should be driving this baby. <laughs> yeah, that's an exciting moment. All right, have an awesome day, guys. We'll talk to you later.